Hello, my name is Neil Davidson and I'm the founder of Raw Amber Studios. Welcome to another portrait drawing session. This video mimics the structure of a traditional portrait drawing class. We'll show you three photographs on the screen, one for 10 minutes, one for 20 and one for 30. And it's your job to draw the photograph that you see in front of you. Lesa Dingamans will be joining us and doing a demonstration along with us. You can follow her instructions or you can draw your own thing. It's entirely up to you. Once you've finished your work, don't forget to post it to Instagram and hashtag it with hashtag raw umber live. Right, let's get started. Hello and welcome to another Raw Umber video. As Niels already said, we will have three poses this week, 10 minutes, 20 and 30 minute pose. I will be drawing along and occasionally weighing in with some tips. So let's get started. So I've already put a few marks down. They represent the width and the height of the skull. I always try and look for the midpoint, so the center line going from his chin to his forehead, as well as his midpoint of his face, which in this case is the line of his eyes. With a face, you can usually divide it up into three thirds. You've got the bottom of the nose, which is in his case a little bit above the midpoint, and the brow as well. When I look at his mouth, it's not quite halfway, it's actually about two thirds up from his chin to his nose. So that's something I'm, how I measure. We spoke a bit about measuring in the last video, so do have a look if you haven't seen that one. It might be useful to you. So when I look at the eyes, you can see the eye socket starts at a certain point from the outside of a face. So that's what I measure. If I try and measure a little bit everywhere and not get stuck on one thing. And as you can see, I try and compare as many measures to each other as possible. So the forehead against the brow, for instance. Also remember what we said with the clock, you can try and find certain angles by adding a circle and seeing what sort of time they look at. So in this case, the angle of his hairline is actually not quite as sharp as I've got it. It's more like 10 past or 10 to. And so you can change it quite easily. You can also see I compare measurements. So I check the forehead against the chin, for instance. You could also check vertical measurements against horizontal ones and vice versa. Main thing is to always keep double checking. With the brow, it's the same principle as we did in the hairline. You can check the angles against an imaginary clock. That really helps me with finding the angle. So to get the rest of the measurements of the eye sockets, I'm going to try and compare several measurements to each other. Have a look and see how I do that and see if that's useful to you. Note that I'm using vertical against horizontal and horizontal against vertical. Now we've got the angle of the brow, the bottom of the eye socket and the sides of the eye socket. We can start filling it in. For the cheekbones, what I tend to do with this box method is I try and see where the widest point is, which is usually around the bottom of the eye socket. And then using my angle method that I explained with the hairline, I try and find out how steep it is. With some people, the um, with some people the chin is a little bit more narrow than the eye socket, and the width of the forehead is narrower than the cheekbones. And in some people, that's different. So that says a lot about a person's face. For stuff like the corners of the mouth, so widths in the face. You can take vertical measurements following the center line and just checking how things line up. So the corner of his mouth, does it line up with the middle of his eye socket or a third? Same thing can be done for the sides of his nose, for instance, or her nose, if it's a female model. And the sides of the chin. In this 10 minute pose, um, I am speaking a little bit more about measurements and angles like we did last week, just as a recap. And then I'll get more into the boxes for the two, uh, for the 20 minute pose. So we'll talk a bit more about that. 
but in this pose I'm mainly focusing on measuring and getting angles and that sort of thing. So I'm actually not going to take this drawing really far, I'm just focusing on measuring, angles and so on. And that is the basis of learning to see, like I spoke about in the last video. I'm just going to check if the length and the width correspond as they should. And then I'm going to start drawing the rest of his hairline. Now with this method of measuring, um, you might get a little bit too invested in getting it right. But the main thing is to just recheck constantly and see if you if you got it right and it's okay if you didn't you know just need to constantly recheck and redraw and that's just what drawing is sort of like for me anyway i, I don't have a magical eye like some people do so from here on when i've already got the most of the face I'm just going to try and recheck everything and break down the shapes even more. I also like putting in the shadows just because it helps me, or the darks really, it just because it helps me to see the shapes a little bit more clear. So some people asked about the box method of constructing a head last week. There's now a short video on the Raw Umber YouTube channel which explains that method in detail. Do have a look, you might find it useful to watch at some point. The next pose I'm going to get more into that method. With this front um, view of the face I didn't think it was that useful because it's really just a flat um, angle. So I wanted to just recap the measuring a little bit um, and in the next 20 minutes I'm going to get more into that method for people who did see the video and wondering why I wasn't using that. In the meantime let's just get on with this drawing. I'm just starting to put in the hair a little bit. I like you uh, putting in the skull first because that is something that will never move. You know, uh, people, don't, people might get a haircut but their skull will never change. So I like putting the skull in first and then putting the hair on top and that way I know that there's structure underneath the mass of the hair. Now I'm just going to start putting in the darker details just to show you that even though this doesn't really look like a face at the moment, when you have these sort of constructive um, and well measured shapes in, it's fairly easy to put details on top. So I'm just going to draw a few stuff like eyes and lips and that sort of thing and hopefully you'll see that with a bit of time this could, have, this could turn into a very um, finished drawing but it's all about that structure underneath. Okay so I'm just going to finish that up and I'll see you in a 20 minute pose.
So here we are again, it's a 20 minute pose. This is actually the tutorial, um, sorry, this is actually the pose that I used for the tutorial I did this week. Um, we're going to use the same principles of measurement and um, the same sort of width to height ratio as we used in the 10 minute pose. Um, but now we're going to take it a little bit further. With the 10 minute pose, I used a flat box to start with. And we're going to start with that same principle in this pose. Um, I'm going to divide it by halves like I did the last one. But the difference between this pose and the last one is that I'm starting from the side of the face and then adding the front plane afterwards. So as we know from the last pose, the horizontal line is the line of the zygomatic arch, meaning the cheekbone, going from the ear hole in the middle of the skull to the bottom of the eye socket. The way to find the, the middle of the uh, square is to cross, make a cross in the actual square, and that will be where the middle is. Next, I'm going to look at the angle of the actual box. So the box is actually not horizontal. The way I know that is by following the ear hole the angle of that to the bottom of the eye socket and you can see that's actually going slightly upwards so I know that my box is slightly tilted forward. I also know that we that the box is slightly tilted um, in a way that makes us see the bottom of the box a little bit and I know that because I can actually see the underside of his chin. So we can just create a box like that so I follow the line of the side to his chin to the other side or maybe the line from his corner of the eye to the other corner of the eye to try and find that line that indicates how that box is tilted. Once I've got that in, I know that with the rule of thirds that the nose and the brow are roughly going to be on one third of that box. And when I know that, I also know roughly where the ear is located. Now I made the box from the forehead to um, the chin but there's actually the skull is actually not completely square it's a little bit higher so what some people like to do is they put a circle on the side like that that just sticks out a little bit more and then they do that but I personally don't really love using a circle because as you can see it sort of doesn't line up it's kind of hard to um, measure or be precise with it but you can use it as a way to sort of figure out how the skull would be rounded off on the top so I'm just going to leave it in today. Okay, so next up we're going to find the center line. The center line is between his eyes to the middle of his, it's basically the middle of his face. So next up I'm just going to try and get the main uh, skull shape in, following the angles and lines that I've already constructed figuring out where the nose roughly should be, that sort of thing. I actually made a little mistake and, to, and used the wrong uh, line for the nose, but um, I corrected that. Um, I like, because I know where the eye socket is, I also like to put that in as soon as possible. And so already you can start to see that a skull, or actually a human skull, is starting to form. And from there on we're going to start building onto that and try and find his likeness, not just a skull, but actually his. I hope that the box thing is sort of clear for everyone.
Um, it can be quite challenging when you're just starting a bit, but I find it's really useful to be able to draw heads in any direction and not just people who are straight on. Okay, so next what I'm doing is just putting in the shoulders. Um, I think I said this in previous videos as well, but the ear, from the ear hole, there's also a big muscle that goes from around that area all the way to the pit of the neck, which is called the mastoid. It's really useful to um, put that in because that shows you how the head sits on the shoulders. So uh, that's a really good uh, point. That's why the ear is so good. It's sort of bang in the middle of the skull, but also attaches to the eye socket and to the pit of the neck. So it's a really good reference point for drawing. Okay, so um, now I've got all my big shapes in. I'm just going to give it a little clean up. We don't need all those construction, line, li those construction lines anymore. Um, so I'm just going to get rid of them. Any lines we don't need anymore. I'm only going to keep the ones that we're actually going to use. So the ones relating to the outline and the structural points. So for instance, the, the side of the head versus the front of the head. Those lines I'm going to keep. But it's just easier to draw when you don't have a lot of lines clogging up your um, your drawing. And um, for people who haven't seen the materials video, this might be a good time um, to remind you to don't press too hard on your charcoal on pencil at the start, because then that means you can't erase any lines anymore later on. So you can see here I'm sort of refining the eye socket and the way it relates to the cheekbone a little bit. Cheekbone is actually a little bit square uh, near the eye socket, so I always like to put a little square shape in right there. We'll get more into the specifics of everything in future tutorials. I kind of want to keep it general at the moment, and then we'll get more specific as we go along. So in this drawing, again, I'm just focusing on keeping things quite general and just sort of showing you the big planes of the face and how to construct the face almost without having to see the model even. Um, and then we can always just put finish on top of that. And I'll also get into that a little bit more on uh, the longer pose. So now I've got all the big shapes in that are a general skull. What I'm trying to do is just sort of adjust my lines here and there and just try and make it a little bit more like him. Also, don't forget, I'm here in the comments if you're watching this live. So don't forget, you can always ask me any questions that you don't understand. Feel free to just ask me whatever. Also, if you're having trouble with a specific part or you want to rewatch it, you can always rewind the video even if as even as it's playing right now live. So you can always just go back a few seconds or minutes and just rewatch the bits.
As you can see, as I slowly uh, resolve things a little bit more and I change small angles and that sort of thing, it starts to look a little bit more um, like him and a little bit less general. And now when I add the hair in, it starts looking a lot more like him. So every human has a skull, so you can always start with just a skull and a general idea of a human head. And when you know how to draw that, then you can draw anyone. You just have to maybe make the jaw a bit bigger for somebody or the forehead a bit bigger for someone else. But they all have the same uh, the same anatomy. So it's good to know a little bit about that so you know that you you can just draw a general human and then the actual person you are drawing on top of that. About the hairline, the hairline sort of follows the skull, it's always a little bit in front of the ear. Then there's an angle that follows the side of the eyebrow, as you can see, it's almost exactly the same angle. And um, around the point where the skull turns, so the side to the front plane, you usually have a little bit of a gap where the hair is a little bit more receded. I'm just drawing in some uh, darker accents that try and make my drawing a little bit more specific. It's always a bit of a balance between keeping things general and constructive and trying to put details in and stuff and stuff like that. Um, some people are too uh, detailed and they get to the details too quickly, whereas I'm someone who I think I like to stay general, maybe a little bit too long, so I always try and force myself to. Uh, put details in to sort of get to progress the drawing a little bit. Okay, so now I've got a lot, a fair amount of stuff in. I'm just going to continue shading, just getting the big shapes uh, of the shadows in. And that helps me see stuff a little bit more clearly. So it progresses the drawing a little bit more. Again, I, uh, I'm focusing on that big muscle towards the ear. The, in my opinion, the most important muscle of the neck. I just leave that out just so um, it can be a no to myself that that's where the neck is. And then around that I can start adjusting stuff from there. Again, and like I said before, um, your lines don't have to be perfect from the start. Um, you can just put a line in and then adjust it. That's the way I draw. I know not everybody does it that way, but for me that really helps so I don't get too perfectionistic about my uh, drawings. So for the last uh, few minutes I'm just going to draw a little bit more, just get some small shapes in and that sort of thing, and I'll leave you to it. I hope you're having a nice time, and um, I'll see you in the 30 minute pose.
Hello again! So we are already at the last pose. Well, this will be a bit quicker. Uh, I will actually draw a little bit quicker than the last one, so let's see how this goes. Let's start like we did before, with the big rectangle, and just find the midpoint of that uh, rectangle. In this case, that line is also the bottom of the eye socket, so we can just take that directly towards the side of the box to find where that midpoint of that box is as well. I'm also measuring the width of the side of the box versus the front of the box to see how wide it should be. Using a cross, I can find the middle of the side of the box. Just behind the middle of that point will be, back, will be where the ear is, just like last time. Using our rule of thirds, I can determine where the brow and nose are. These things don't work on everyone, but they are a good place to start. But I always measure to see if they hold true for each pose. Now I know where these are, I know where the ear is going to be. In front of the ear will be the jawline, and the widest point of the face will be the cheekbone, in this case. So that's another thing we can get in as well. I know I'm getting a bit quicker. I want to take this drawing a little bit further to show you how you can finish on top. Um, so feel free to rewind if it's going a bit too quick for you. Next what I'm going to do is find out how wide the front plane of the face is. Um, I try and look at the angles for the uh, cheekbone versus the forehead and the chin. And again, you can use a circle to determine how the back of the head is sort of curved. Next, I am drawing in the mastoid muscle from the ear to the pit of the neck. As I did last time, I try and find the eye sockets and the nose first, and then work out from there. As I said, I want to take this pose a little bit further, so I'm going to start shading a little bit earlier. I just shade in the big stuff. If you look at where the light is coming from, it's coming from uh, the far right in this case. That means that everything that is turning away from the light, will be in shade, so the whole side of the face will be in shade, so I'm just going to shade that in. Now I want to start getting the features in, like I did last time as well, I start with the mouth, and I measure if it's the midpoint or the or one third up or something like that. When I, when I looked, it seemed like it was one third up, so that's where I'm going to place it. I really like working in um, measurements of thirds or halves because I think for me they're very intuitive to work with. I can always see if something is roughly a third or a half. When it gets more, like quarters and fifths and sixths, that sort of thing. Um, it gets a bit confusing for me visually, so I always try and just see if it's a third or half of something. It doesn't really matter what. And then it gives me an easier way of uh, measuring. Now I've got all these big uh, shapes in. I'm going to jump straight to where we basically stopped the last video. And that was where um, we started putting some smaller shapes in to make it look a little bit more like him. So I'm going to just do that for a little bit and let you get on with your drawing as well.
Now I've got a few of these shapes in. What I'm going to start doing is breaking down the eye socket a little bit more. I measure the width of the bridge of the nose because I like working from the middle out. And I compare it to the top lip. Once I see that that measurement is the same in this case, I can I know the width of that and I can work my way out using the angles that we used in the last pose as well. I like using uh, big dark masses and cutting into them with my rubber. It just makes it a little bit quicker to work that way than drawing with line. But of course, if you want to uh, just draw lines and not shade, that's absolutely up to you. Um, it's just the way I prefer to work. So now I'm using the same principle of measuring things and looking at angles that we spoke about in the last two poses to start breaking down the eye sockets a little bit more. One thing to note is that any feature in the face is going to be symmetrical. So if something is a certain size on one side of the face, it will most most times will be the exact same size on the other side of the face. Some people do have small changes, but I always find it best to go from a symmetrical face and then put the um, asymmetrical bits in later, then go from the other way around. So always structure first. And after I have done a little bit on the eye sockets, what I want to do is work my way down as well. So I try not to take one bit of the drawing too far ahead. And I try to work on a minute here and then a minute there, just so I don't get too invested in one minute of the drawing. Because as you saw in um, the 20 minute pose, sometimes you make mistakes and you don't want to get too invested in your drawing too early. You can use the center line to see how other things like the side of the nose and the corner of the mouth are lined up. So you can see, for instance, how far is the corner of the mouth from the center line. And again, this will be symmetrical on both sides of the face. And this is really useful for stuff like the side of the nose as well. So like I said in the last post, some people like to use a circle as well to figure out what the side of the face is like this. Um, I just want to show you that a possibility and it's something that is sometimes very useful. Um, I just find that they're not always that accurate, so I don't use them that much. But you can lightly draw them over and just they help with figuring out, for instance, what the forehead is doing a little bit. Um, a really good book I can recommend. 
is Annie Loomis. The, I think it's the portrait and head and head and hands. Um, I mentioned this in my other video as well. And then um, I'm just breaking down some of the shapes of the eye socket and the nose down a little bit further before I start finishing. At this point, the drawing is very blocky. Um, that's just the way I like to work. It's very uh, constructive, big blocks. Uh, once I've got those in, what I can do is I can just start softening and making it look a bit more human. But for me, this is the most important bit of the drawing. And just cleaning some lines up, that sort of thing, just to keep drawing nice and clean. Okay, so now I've got all those big blocks in, like I did on the last drawing, I'm just going to start putting the hair in on top of the skull. When you've uh, got hair, usually it has the same um, sort of consistency throughout. Might be a bit flatter on the back of the head, for instance, but um, try not to try to make it reasonably consistent. Otherwise, it looks a little bit like uh, his skull is indented in places, if that makes sense. So that's why I like putting the skull in first and the hair on top. It makes it a little bit more consistent. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to start breaking stuff down a little bit further. So I'm going to start with the left eye socket. Um, I already put the lower lid in just by uh, rubbering out the whole strip. And now I'm putting these smaller shapes back in. Always aiming for consistency, so if one eye has something, the other eye needs it as well. And again, trying to relate um, what I do in the eyes to other places in the skull as well. So for instance, now I've put them in, I can see that the nose has to move a little bit further to the right. And as I make the shapes in the nose a little bit more specific, I move it around a little bit.
and uh, like we did before, I try to tra take my whole drawing up at the same time. So if I'm finishing a little bit at the eyes, I'm also going to start finishing a little bit on the nose and a little bit on the mouth, just to keep everything sort of at the same level. Okay, so now I'm pretty happy with my shapes. What I'm going to start doing is get into the finish a little bit. So at the moment everything's very cartoony and sharp. So what I try and do is start blending a little bit where the face is a little bit rounder and not quite as harsh. And I also use a bit of compressed charcoal to uh, put some darker accents in. And what I try to do with that when I finish is work on the edge between light and shadow. To try and put some darker accents in here and uh, a sharper edge somewhere else and sort of blend with the brush somewhere else and that sort of variety is going to make it look more interesting as a drawing and you can see that as i do that i also my shapes get smaller and smaller so I start mirroring um, a more complete finish with everything I do. So it's never just finishing or just shapes. I always try to push the drawing forward, but also um, at the same time start getting mirror or finish. At this point, I'm just using the compressed charcoal and the rubber as well as the brush. The brush to blend, the rubber to take charcoal off, and the compressed charcoal 
for putting in darker accent. Finishing is just something that can take a while. You go back and forth. Um, if you do something and have to raise it, that doesn't mean you've done it wrong. It's just sort of how, uh, well, again, how drawing works for me. I put something in and I take it back out and I, and I change it a little bit. And every time I do so, I get to a closer approximation of where I want to be. So I'm just going to continue doing this for the last few minutes um, and then already we're done with for this week. So um, for me that went really, really quick. I hope for you that you had a nice time and I will see you next week.
Thank you for taking part. Don't forget to post your work on Instagram and tag it with hashtag raw amber live. I'd like to thank Lizette Dingermans for doing the drawing demonstration and you can download photographs of the model from the link I'm about to show you on the screen. You can subscribe to our YouTube channel and follow us on Instagram, we're Raw Amber Studios. I'm going to run this every Sunday as long as the current situation continues, so I'll see you next week.